All right, welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. We're starting off this Tuesday edition with football. The Ray and Nephew Jamaica Premier League closed off match week eight with two games at the Stadium East Field on Monday night. Gerard Morrisili has been working really, really hard. He has a recap for us. The final pair of encounters in match week eight of the Ray and Nephew Jamaica Premier League were on the agenda on Monday. In both matches, West Kingston rivals Arnett Gardens and Tivoli Gardens sought to close the gap on front runners Mount Pleasant. First up, the junglists, who faced a very united unit which they had not beaten in their last three attempts. But Arnett seemed unfazed in their efforts as they looked to consolidate their second place in the standings. The post, and after a bit of a slow start, they finally broke the resistance of Veer. Rasheen Thompson firing home from close range to net his first of the season. This gave them a platform to express themselves in the second half, but it took another Veer mistake and a bit of luck for Jaheim Thomas to slot home his second of the season. And the follow-up surely is put away! And that's how it would end. A comfortable 2 0 win game. for the Xavier Gilbert coach team. Next up, Tivoli versus newly promoted Treasure Beach, with the Jerome Wade led team aiming to shoot up the table to third spot. And it seemed like it would be a very comfortable night for the men in orange and black, with goals either side of halftime, first from marksman Justin Dunn, who netted his seventh of the season, and then Janine Ray, who scored his first of the campaign. Treasure Beach had other ideas, however, with first Tavar Thompson giving them hope late in the second half. Then the unthinkable, as substitute Romario Smith lined up a free kick in the 90th minute. Treasure Beach thought they had earned themselves a point, but the fighting spirit of the former champs shone through. And at the end of this crazy, crazy game, Tivoli ended on top, moving up to third spot in the table. Well, well, well. Here's how the table is shaping up after the match week. Mount Pleasant still comfortably on top, with Arnett and Tivoli leading the chasing pack, and there are still only two teams without a win, Lime Hall Academy and Mullines United. All right, so a huge win for Tivoli, especially Jerome Wade's project, showing extremely promising signs. So, Ricardo, we're going to start, though, at... we have two matches to discuss. We'll start with Arnett versus Ve. Arnett getting that win against their two goals to jump to third so a very very important win and we had coach Xavier Gilbert on set of course he was here to discuss reggae girls business but we asked him about Annette Gardens and he said you know this is the more difficult of the two jobs and of course he'd be very very pleased with this result also being able to keep a clean sheet yeah, very pleased with the result. I would think Xavier Gilbert, especially after the disappointment of the Riga girls not qualifying for the CONCACAF Gold Cup playoffs. But important three points for Arnett Gardens. And as you pointed out, important clean sheet for them as well, propelling them into second position now, only behind the defending champions, Mount Pleasant. Jaheem Thomas had a good game for Arnett Gardens last night. He said after the game that he felt he could have been even better, was ultimately named player of the match um, was heavily involved in the first goal scored the second goal a crazy type of goal by the way Mariah the second goal as we saw because multiple opportunities for Veer United to clear their lines and they were unable to do that and uh, when the shot came in off the bar then Jaheem Thomas comfortably slotted it home um, there was no way he was gonna miss from that his first goal of the season incidentally came against Tivoli Gardens in a losing effort, yeah. I think he will be quite happy that this goal here has come in a winning effort for Arnett Gardens, his second of the Jamaica Premier League season. And yeah, a very important three points for Arnett and Xavier Gilbert. Yeah, and of course, they get closer to the top of the table because it's important if they really want to battle to win this competition, they need to keep as close as they can to Mount Pleasant because they've been very, very dominant. Ricardo, the VA coach, and I feel like if I heard this narrative again, the use of the word discipline and the team losing discipline when it came to the matches, you know, Lin Linval Dixon, he said that again, the team started well, but they lost their discipline. Talk to me about that statement. You know, sometimes it can be difficult, and unless you are on the training ground and seeing how teams operate 
um, and how they get along with their coaches, it can be difficult sometimes to determine where the blame should lie. Now, if you ask me, I think it is the responsibility of coaches to ensure that the discipline is maintained throughout the course of the game. Now, I find that with a lot of coaches in the Caribbean, Mariah, and not just in football, but in various sports, they will say to players, they will say to teams, do this and do that. Um, but that's not real coaching in my estimation. Real coaching is being able to design the workouts that will get the team to do the things that you want to almost as an automatic yes. um, reaction to how the game is being played or the situation that you are in. And for me, if you are unable to do that, then you are failing as the coach and can't blame the team necessarily for saying, well, you did not maintain your discipline for 90 minutes. But what are the types of workouts that you have implemented to ensure that the team is able to operate in the way that you want them to for 90 minutes? And I think that is what separates the very good to great coaches from the coaches who are generally ordinary or generally get ordinary results and i'm not saying that specifically of veer in this um situation yeah. i am saying that as as a general way of how i think about a coaching player coaching team relationship yeah, well, in the next fixture, Ricardo, we had Tivoli up against Treasure Beach. And I have to say kudos to Treasure Beach for, of course, being 2-0 down and then showing that they belong in the JPL. I was really excited because at the start of the season, we spoke and we tried to analyze whether the teams that were promoted belonged. And many a times, truthfully, when the teams make it into this um, top-tier football part of their career they really really struggle and they don't last for long so I was really pleased to see Treasure Beach putting up a fight and showing Tivoli Gardens that they're here to stay yeah terrific fight that they put up as well because you you go two down against a very good Tivoli Gardens team against a very well coached Tivoli Gardens team with Jerome Waite at the helm and they found a way to come back scoring the second the equalizer in the 90th minute with this free kick yeah pretty a good free kick as well but there is something about Jerome Waite coach teams that I think people have to know Jerome Waite usually focuses on fitness and generally his teams are extremely fit and they get fitter as the campaign goes on and so what you'll find yes you might score in the 90th minute but they will have the legs to push for as long as the referee allows to get whatever it is that they need. And I think that's why, well, that's part of why, outside of the fact that they clearly have a lot of quality in their setup, it's part of why I, I am really looking closely at this Tivoli Gardens team this season because I think Jerome Waite is an excellent coach. The one thing I know he'll do with this Tivoli Gardens team, he will get them fit. And that will count for a lot when you get to the playoff stage of the Jamaica Premier League. They've already had a good start. They're in third position at the moment, and I expect them to maintain that um, for majority of the season, and I expect them to make a really good run when they get in the playoffs. I don't see this Tivoli Gardens team falling away at any point this season under the leadership of Jerome Waite. Yeah, there was one chance in the fourth minute of added time that Tivoli missed. Did you yeah. see that? Yeah. Yeah. Really unfortunate. And at that point, they thought that the game had gone. They had missed the opportunity to win the game, but they got another one and it was buried. And there you have it, Tivoli winning 3-2, taking them to 13 points. One behind Arnett Gardens on 14, and they are six behind the leaders, uh, Mount Pleasant, on 19. Yeah, what I will say to our viewers is the excitement in the Jamaica Premier League. It, of course, continues to build. And if you are late to the party and you've missed the previous matches, you need to jump on and, of course, you know, catch all the action right here on your home of champions because you're missing out some really exciting football. Also, if you're busy like me, download the Sportsmax app. You can have it with you wherever you go. So let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we're heading across to Trinidad and Tobago to see if their football can top what we've been seeing in Jamaica. Let's take a break. <laughs> 